Okay, everybody, welcome back to Sports and Money. I am Benjamin Parker. It is a privilege to have you with us today. I hope life is treating you well wherever you're watching this from. Hope things are going well for you. Today, we're looking at the Kansas City Chiefs offense, and I am so excited about this today. We've already covered the defense in depth. We've looked at the draft picks. We've looked at the free agents. We have covered the people that the Chiefs have let go. We've covered the people the Chiefs have decided to bring back. Today, we're going to look at the splashy side of football for the Kansas City Chiefs. This is the thing that gives Kansas City fans hope for the next four or five years, maybe even beyond, depending on how well things go. All your hopes are banking on the offensive side of the football, and rightfully so. You've got a number of players, a number of deals there on the offensive side that make some other teams around the NFL jealous and envious about what all the hopes you may have for the future. There is so much to cover. Before we get to it, I want to put out a couple of disclaimers. Okay, first of all, the names. I may butcher a couple of names, and I apologize to any of the players whose names I butcher. I apologize to those of you Kansas City fans who know more than I do about how these names are pronounced. I apologize. I'm going to butcher a couple of them. That's okay. We'll get past it. Just consider me ignorant on that portion of things. Also, this is not an in-depth look at the depth chart. I want to make that clear. We will cover some of the depth chart. What I'm really trying to do today is two things. I want to take a look at how you're looking for the upcoming season for 2018. I also want to take a look at the bigger picture. This is what Brett Veach and Andy Reid have to look at all the time. This is what they base their decisions on. I want to take a look at the bigger picture, how you're going to look over specifically the next three to four seasons. That is what we're really going to take a look at today. We will cover some depth chart. We will not cover everything. I'm not going to take a look at position battles. I'm not trying to tell you who exactly is going to be playing exactly where all season long in 2018, but we will cover some of that. But by and large, we're trying to get a look at the bigger picture over the next three or four seasons. All right, let's get into it. Right here it is. Let me show you what you're looking at and then how I want us to look at it as well. Quarterback, offensive line. Right here are your running backs. Here's your wide receivers. Here are your tight ends. Now, I said we're not going to take an in-depth look at the depth chart. There are people who are not on this board who will play a lot of meaningful snaps for the Chiefs this season. Just don't have room for everybody. But by either way of injury or by somebody just really stepping up and surprising the Chiefs this year, there are people on the roster right now who will play meaningful and important snaps, maybe, maybe even end up playing a bunch of snaps due to injury, who I don't have on this board. That's okay. We're taking a look at the big picture and how the Chiefs are planning to proceed over the next three or four seasons. I would like for you to think of this as a house. This is the foundation right here. I'll get back to that. This is the next part of the supporting structure. And this is all the frilly and beautiful things that are important that make the building look beautiful. So we're going to get into that. But if you will, think of this as a building from the ground up. First of all, Patrick Mahomes. You might say, wait, he's the quarterback. He's the glamour guy. He is the beautiful thing that makes everything wonderful. He's the foundation. Make no mistake about it. Patrick Mahomes is the foundation for the Kansas City Chiefs for the next four or five years at least. If he is successful, he could be the foundation for the next 15 seasons for the Kansas City Chiefs, but he is the foundation. Without him, the Chiefs' plans for the future fall apart. Without him, everything else crumbles. The team crumbles, the playoff hopes crumble, everything crumbles. Now, Patrick Mahomes is an absolute steal at $3.7 million. You cannot get a good quarterback for $3.7 million. You can't get a good quarterback for $10 million, all right? The brilliant, genius, but risky part of the Chiefs' plan is that Patrick Mahomes is only costing you $3.7 million, and he is signed through 2020. That's the next three seasons, but he has a fifth-year option. If he's playing anywhere near worth his salt at all, the Chiefs are going to gobble up that fifth-year option, lock him up all the way through 2021, and count their lucky stars that they can do so. Patrick Mahomes is an absolute steal. For the next three seasons, that number will not go too much above $3.7 million. It will go up some. It will not go up a lot. That is an absolute steal, and make no mistake about it, even though he may be the glamour guy, he is the foundation. Everything else rests on Patrick Mahomes. Be clear about this, though. I made this point in an earlier video. You do not need Patrick Mahomes to be a Hall of Famer. You do not need him to be perennially one of the two or, best, two or three best quarterbacks on the NFL rosters. What you need for him to do is to be able to move the football up and down the field without a lot of turnovers, be able to give the offense confidence, be able to allow the other weapons that the Chiefs have to produce and to flourish. 
He does not need to be a top four quarterback in the NFL for the Chiefs to win and win big. He does need to be basically a top 10 or 12 quarterback at least. Somebody who can move the offense, get the offense up and down the field. The Chiefs are healthy enough that he will, if he will at least produce that over the next few years, they will have hopes of going to the Super Bowl rather consistently. Now make no mistake about it, the Chiefs are hoping for much greater. They think, and this is the reason that they let Alex Smith go, they think and they believe that he is the next big thing, that he is fully capable of being a top quarterback, top four or five, maybe even top quarterback after the Bradys of the world are gone, that he is capable of doing exactly that. At $3.7 million, he's an absolute steal. He gives you so much flexibility over the next four seasons. Even that fifth-year option is going to be nothing compared to what you would pay a legitimate quarterback on the open market. So he is the foundation. Right here is the supporting structure, the offensive line. I'm going to leave that off for now. We'll get back to it. There's so much to get into there with the offensive line. Let's move over here to the tight end spot. Travis Kelsey and... Demetrius Harris. Now, with Travis Kelsey, you have a star, and you know it if you're a Kansas City fan. At $10 million a year, he's not a steal, but he's a fair deal. He's worth every dollar of that $10, uh, $10 million a year, and you have him signed through 2021. For the next four seasons, you have Travis Kelsey locked up at tight end, and he's going to be worth every single dollar, and that cap number does not go up much at all over the next uh, three seasons after this one. So you've got him locked up at tight end. He's a star. There's no reason he won't remain that, and he's worth every single dollar of that $10 million. Backup tight end is a bit of a problem for the Chiefs. It's not a horror story, but it's a bit of a problem. They lacked consistently. They would like to see somebody either step up at the, at the number two tight end spot and either be able to catch more passes or be able to block more and block tougher. They haven't really gotten that. Harris continues to be a project. He has potential. He has, a, he has athleticism. But they would like to see him really step up this season and be able to provide some stuff. You've got a couple other guys there at tight end who have some promise, have some potential, but they just haven't shown it yet. Kelsey is your star. Backup tight end is a bit of an issue. Like I said, it's not a horror story. You've got the starting spot locked up for several seasons for the foreseeable future, so you were great at tight end, but you would like to see either somebody step up for the Chiefs or in the next offseason be able to see them find somebody who can back up that tight end spot. Moving over to the running backs. Kareem Hunt is an absolute steal. This is one of the guys that makes the Kansas uh, makes other teams around the NFL jealous of the Kansas City Chiefs. Kareem Hunt is an absolute steal at seven hundred seventy-eight thousand dollars, and you've got him locked up for the next three seasons. You have him for eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. He is actually there for the twenty twenty season as well. An absolute steal if he continues to do what he has done. You have one of the top five bargains in all of the NFL. Nobody is going to beat that except for another guy who's on the Chiefs roster as well. This is one of the bright spots. This is one of the things you have to be excited about. And you might say, wait, it's just the running back spot. But yeah, he can do so much out of that running back spot. He is a tremendous talent. If he continues to play the way that he has played, this is one of the reasons that you have hopes for not only going to the playoffs, but for getting a shot at the Super Bowl over the next few seasons, and what a tremendous value. $778,000, nobody can beat that anywhere else in the NFL. Spencer Ware, this is, a, this is an outstanding running back as well. Spencer Ware can play very well, very solid running back. Doesn't have the explosive talent that Kareem Hunt has, but that's okay. Spencer Ware is a very solid player coming out for your running back spot as well. Not as good of a deal at $1.8 million, but that's fine. That's, that's decent money for a backup running back for somebody that you know can produce. You've only got him for one more season, though. My hunch is Spencer Ware. I'm sure the Chiefs would love to bring him back after 2018, but my hunch is that you are not going to see him come back after 2018, that you will actually see him try the free agent market, and you will actually see him disappear to some other team. I don't think the Chiefs, even though they could afford him, I don't think you're going to see the Chiefs sign him up for the money that he's going to be able to hit in the free agent market. So you got him for one more season. That's not a disaster. I think you can find somebody else in the draft or in free agency to fill that number two backup spot. But I do think after this season, you probably will see Spencer Ware go. It doesn't take anything away from the fact that you've got Kareem Hunt there for the next three seasons. So running back, you were fantastic. At tight end, you were fantastic at the starting spots. And at quarterback, you were fantastic. Wide receivers. Like I said, I didn't have room for everybody. I've only got the top four potentially wide receivers here. you got other guys on the roster. 
Sammy Watkins, you have Tyreek Hill, Conley, and Robinson. Conley, probably the same deal as Ware. He's capable. He's a solid receiver. You're glad to have him on the team. After this season, he's going to be gone. You're not going to have him anymore. He's going to hit the free agent market, and you're just simply not going to want to pay him the money that he's going to require in order to keep him on the team and play that third, uh, maybe third role or fourth role as wide receivers go. So you're not going to see him any, around any longer, I wouldn't think, after 2018. But you've got him into this season, and he's at a good price, so you're, you're fine there. Sammy Watkins, this is a guy that you're really counting on some big things from. Signed in off the free agent market. He's only He's got an interesting contract. He's only $7.8 million this season. That number goes up drastically next year. It's like $18.5 million in the following season. And then in season number three, it goes up to $21 million. My hunch is this. You're only going to see Sammy Watkins here for two seasons. Season number three, his cap number goes all the way up to $21 million and the dead cap to let him go is seven million dollars. Why would you say that? And that is because of this guy right here, Tyreek Keel. I said maybe the only guy who could beat uh, uh, Hunt in terms of value is Tyreek Keel. Tyreek Keel is probably the, the best value right now in all the NFL. Tyreek Keel is a tremendous guy. The Chiefs have seen him produce. They think he is on the verge of absolute stardom. They think that. And they might not be wrong. A lot of people around the league think the same thing. $705,000 he is an absolute steal that is a giveaway you cannot hardly play football in the NFL for any less than that you can play for a little bit less than that it was an absolute steal you've got him for two more seasons 2018 2019 because he wasn't drafted in the first round there is no fifth year option with him but you've got him for the next two seasons now here's what I think you will see happen in 2019 offseason heading into the 2020 season you would have Watkins for another year, but he's a $21 million cap number, and the number to let him go would only be $7 million. If Tyreek Hill explodes into stardom like the Chiefs expect him to do, and like he has shown he has the potential to do, I suspect you will see the Chiefs sign Tyreek Hill to a long-term contract. I think you will see them do everything they can to keep him on the team to keep that massive offense moving forward. If Patrick Mahomes is producing like they think he can, if Tyreek Hill continues to do what they think he can do, then in 2020, the 2019 offseason, heading into 2020, I think you will see the Chiefs do everything they can to try to get Tyreek Hill to become a long-term member of the Chiefs and throw a lot of money his way in order to do so, probably in the neighborhood of 16, 17, 18 million dollars depending on where the price for wide receivers is at that particular offseason. $705,000, what an absolute joke. And this is one of the things that makes people look at the Chiefs and be very envious of some of the things that they have. Not that some other teams don't have some other very good deals. Nobody has a better deal than this. $705,000 for the, for the Chiefs for Tyreek Hill for the next two seasons. What a fantastic deal. Now, I think if you see Tyreek Hill continue to be great and sign that big, a long-term contract, I think in 2019 offseason, you'll see the Chiefs part ways with Sammy Watkins. But Sammy Watkins is a very talented guy. I think you're going to see a lot of good things from him. Sammy Watkins, I think, will be gone if things go as planned with Tyreek Hill. Uh, Robinson, a very good deal as well. You're not going to see a whole lot of production out of him necessarily, but he is there. He is capable. And at $768,000, you've got him for the next couple of seasons. He will hold down that spot. You will need to address this position in about two seasons. You will need to make some decisions. Uh, but for the next two seasons, you're set a wide receiver, you're fine. You can rotate other people into this spot as Conley leaves, as Robinson leaves. Then you need to make decisions on Hill and Watkins. You are in great shape at wide receiver for at least the next two seasons and maybe even beyond that if Tyreek Hill really blossoms and explodes. All right, let's try to move on. The offensive line. I didn't make this the foundation because I put Mahomes there, but this is no doubt the supporting structure. Let's start with this right here. The strong part of your line right here is Mitchell Schwartz at right tackle. And Chiefs fans, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. Laurent DuVernay Tardif. <laughs> Hope I pronounced that right. This is the guy, these are the two guys who are the strength of your offensive line, okay? $7.7 .7 million signed through 2020. You've got him for three seasons. And DuVernay at $5.4 million, you've got him for the next five seasons. So the strength of your offensive line, the right side, this is the side that we know that, that we can count on. The strength of your offensive line, you know you can count on that right there. At $5.4 million, 
and then they got $7.7 .7 million. These are not steals, they are fair deals, both for the player and for the team. You know you're going to get solid work out of both of these guys. They are not the absolute cream of the crop in the NFL, but they are solid players. You know you're going to get production out of both of these guys, and the prices are fair. You're going to pay money for a good offensive lineman. There's just no way around. The offensive linemen typically do not explode as, as rookies on their rookie deal, except for just a few of the great ones. So you know you're going to pay. These are fair deals, and you've got these guys locked up for the next three seasons and the next five seasons. So you are set there on the strong side of the offensive line. The other side of the offensive line, Eric Fisher. Let's talk about Eric Fisher for a minute. Probably driven some of you can't have the city fans crazy over the years. He's $14 million. He's not worth $14 million. He's a solid player. He's consistent. He has not lived up to his billing coming out of college. He was drafted incredibly high, counting on to be a franchise left tackle. He is solid and consistent. He has never been great. He has never been amazing. He has never been fantastic. He has also never been poor, pathetic, and terrible. He has been solid, just very, very solid. He's the fifth highest paid left tackle in all the NFL. You're not getting a good deal here. As a matter of fact, it's a bad deal, but that's okay. You know if you're an NFL franchise, you have to pay somebody to play left tackle. You have to pay somebody to play offensive line. It's going to cost you money. This is about what you would pay any decent left tackle somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 to $16 million to, for a good left tackle. Fisher is just consistent. He's, he's, his PFF grade last year was 70. That is the threshold of average. Eric Fisher's play is the thresh is the definition of average. If you ever see Eric Fisher's play drop too poor, he will be gone from the team very quickly because of that price tag. That price tag doesn't get any larger. You've got him for the next four seasons if you want him, but if you ever see that production drop, he will be gone very quickly because after this season, the dead cat pit drops as well. You can afford to let him go if you choose to. The Kansas City Chiefs might even be entertaining thoughts of letting him go anyway because for that price tag on the free agent market, you could probably find another good left tackle, but there's not a guarantee of that. You'd have to look to find one. So with Eric Fisher right now, the Chiefs are kind of in a bit of a log jam about what to do with him, over the, not in 2018, but in 2019, 20, and beyond. What are they going to do with him? We'll find out. But for this season, left tackle, you don't have to worry about this. As a matter of fact, for the whole offensive line, the offensive line is not a disaster. It's not bad. It's not great. It is solid. It is something you can build on. It is something you can work with. It is something you can make this offensive line work to make this offense work. You would like to see upgrades on the offensive line after 2018. Here's why. Witzman is gone after this season. I doubt that the Chiefs will bring him back. He'll be a restricted free agent. He's $1.3 million. You're not paying a lot of money for him. He is probably going to start at the, at the left guard spot. Also in 2018, this is the last season, Mitch Moore, center. He will probably be gone as well. 2018, Cameron Irving probably will not be brought back at $1.7 million. And then Davey. So you've got four guys right here. You're not overpaying any of these guys. You're fine. They are not great. They're average. In some cases, what happened last year with the offensive line, like I said, a lot here to cover the offensive line. Last year with the offensive line, you had a lot of injuries. So you had guys who should have been back up starting, and you had guys who should have been starting who just weren't playing at all. You had some guys playing positions where they just weren't totally comfortable. That's normal on offensive lines, but that really happened to the Chiefs a lot last year. So this year, if everybody's healthy, if backups are playing backups and the starters are getting a start, you should have a solid offensive line. The strength is right here at right tackle with Duvern and Schwartz. Left tackle is solid with Fisher. Mitch Morris you can live with at center. You've seen him produce in the past. When he is healthy, he has played reasonably well. You're pretty comfortable there. Left guard is a bit of an issue. You would like to see left guard somebody step up. Witzman, he injured, played a lot there last year. Maybe even Caleb McK uh, uh, Khalil McKenzie. Khalil McKenzie, if he could step up for use at all, would just be a lifesaver for, for the whole team. Not only in terms of money, but in terms of actual on-field play. So, looking again at the starters right here, Schwartz, DuVernay, those are the strengths. Fisher, even though you're not getting a good deal off of him, is average and solid. If he continues to be average and solid, then you will be fine. Morse, you're not paying him hardly anything at all, $1.5 million. You could live with him at center for now, considering that you have other strengths on the offensive line. Left guard is an issue. You need somebody to step up at left guard, whether it's Whitman or Inger 
or maybe even the rookie McKenzie. Um, that's a bit of a long shot, but you'd like to see somebody step up right here at left guard. All of these position, all of these backups right here. You may see Cameron Irving play some center this year. You might see Ender step back up here. All of these guys will be shifted around. For those of you who are familiar with offensive lines, it is standard issue for guys, uh, except for your established starter, for guys to be moved all over the offensive line, from guard to tackle to center, from one side of the offensive line to the other side of the offensive line, just depending on whatever the team needs. You end up playing a lot of different positions if you are an offensive lineman and you are not an established starter in one spot. So all of these guys, David Johnson, Inger, McKenzie, Irving, none of them are great, but you are getting good value out of them because you're not paying them a lot of money. So for the Chiefs, this is what you're looking at for the next three, four seasons. Schwartz and DeBernay, you're locked in. As long as Fisher is consistent, you might think about keeping him. The very second his play drops, he is gone and you will probably need to get a free agent to replace a left tackle. Right here in the middle, 2018, 2019, most of these guys will be gone, okay? Except for the rookie, Irving is gone, Witzman is gone, Morris is gone, Davey is gone. In 2019, Johnson and Ianger are gone. You will need to replenish your offensive line after 2018. You hope, you would love to see maybe an upgrade at left tackle. Even if you don't upgrade at left tackle, you, you're going to need to replace about six positions over the next two off seasons. On the defensive side of football, we talked about this before, they will be in phase two next off season, phase two of what is really a three off season complete overhaul of the defense. They will continue that either the draft or free agency, but on the offensive line side, they're going to need to invest some draft picks, bring in a free agent in order to just replenish that offensive line. Not a disaster, it's solid, but you would like to see them be able to upgrade, and whether you upgrade or not, you're going to have to replace some of these guys over the next couple of seasons. So for the Kansas City Chiefs, you have a lot to be excited about for the Chiefs. They have guys who are in important positions who are locked up for the next three, four, and even five seasons. You have a lot of talent, you have a lot of weapons, you hope right here with this guy you have one of the great future quarterbacks, you have an offensive line that is solid but will need some work over the next couple of seasons. All right, thank you so much for watching. If you've got comments, questions, criticisms, shoot them at us. We'll take it. I'm sure there's some things that we could have improved on and maybe we left out on this. I don't look at the depth chart, but in general, you are in great shape on the offensive side of the football for the next three or four seasons with the Kansas City Chiefs. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Sports and Money. Bye.